All right, today we're going to look at confusing indefinite pronouns, pronouns that uh, can either be singular or plural, depending on how they're being used in the sentence. So pronouns as subjects is a little bit of review. As we said yesterday, indefinite pronouns are usually either singular or plural. Uh, the following are the indefinite pronouns that are always singular. Anybody, either, everything. You can read the list. Uh, this is something you definitely want to commit to memory. Uh, you need to know that when you see this singular pronoun as the subject of a sentence, that the verb also has to be singular. And these are your plural pronouns, both, few, many, several. You see this list is a lot shorter. When you see one of these pronouns as the subject of a sentence, well, then you know that your verb has to be plural. Here's where it gets a little confusing, the tricky indefinite pronouns. See, some pronouns can either be singular or plural depending on the object of the preposition. Remember, in a prepositional phrase, you have the preposition and then the object of the preposition. Behind the house is the green car. The prepositional phrase is behind the house. In that sentence, the preposition is behind and the object of the preposition is house. Uh, if you have any questions about prepositions, prepositional phrases, or the object of a preposition, review the older lessons, or come speak to me and I'll help get you straightened out. So when you see one of these pronouns as the subject of the sentence, at that point you're going to have to look at whatever the object of the prepositional phrase is. Let me show you some examples and hopefully this will straighten it out for you. More of the class is going on the field trip. More of the students are going on the field trip. Both have the same exact indefinite pronoun, the word more. But what you will notice is that the first sentence gets a singular verb, while the second sentence gets a plural verb. And here's why. Look at this sentence. All of the cake has been eaten. In this sentence, all is the indefinite pronoun. Of the cake is a prepositional phrase, and the object of that preposition is cake. How many cakes are we talking about? One cake. So in this case, all of the cake takes a singular verb, has, because we're only talking about one cake. But when we look at a slightly different example, just to add an S to cakes, all of the cakes have been eaten. In this case, the indefinite pronoun is still all. Of the cakes is the prepositional phrase. But in this case, the object of the preposition, cakes, is plural. So now we're talking about more than one cake. So the verb in this situation also has to be plural. So instead of has, we have have been eaten. All of the cake has been eaten. All of the cakes have been eaten. Again, these are the two sentences we just looked at. In both sentences, they have the same indefinite pronoun. But in the first example, the verb is singular. In the second example, the verb is plural. And that's simply because the object of the preposition, cake or cakes, has changed to, from singular to plural. In those cases, that determines which verb we're going to use. Let's practice a few of them together. Some of the test is hard or some of the test are hard? Well, in this case, some is the indefinite pronoun. Test is the object of the preposition in the prepositional phrase of the test. So we're only talking about one test. So the correct verb here is is. Some of the questions are easy, or some of the questions is easy. Again, the indefinite pronoun here is some. The prepositional phrase of the questions, the object of the preposition is questions. So in this case, the correct verb is are. Most of this song sounds familiar, or most sounds familiar? Most is the indefinite pronoun. Song is the object of the preposition. So the correct verb here is sounds.